Where do temptations come from? Let's start quickly for this one. Temptations are created based on who we are as a person and what environments we live in. This was alluded to in Hebrews chapter 12 verse 1, where it stated, And the sin which doth so easily beset us. For sin to catch us, it has to fit us as a person. Temptations are kind of like packages, which are calibrated towards each individual person's strengths and weaknesses. Someone also can't get a temptation that doesn't fit their environment. For example, someone who doesn't love money won't get a temptation about money because it won't actually tempt them. To understand this more, let's look at some of the temptations people face in the Bible and did not scale. First one up, Solomon. King Solomon was the richest and wisest king on earth at his time, as we see in 1 Kings chapter 10. So no temptation could come in the form of not having enough money or not being able to understand something. But there's one thing that Solomon loved and was his weakness, woman. He married Hittites, Zidonians, Edomites, Ammonites, Moabites. His wife count went up to 700, and he had 300 mistresses or side chicks. All this was against the law, if you take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 7 verses 1 to 4, and 1 Corinthians chapter 7 verse 2. His lovely wives eventually carried him away from the faith, and this led to a divide between the ten tribes and Judah. Then there's Achan. In Joshua chapter 6, the Israelites went up against Jericho to defeat the city, and God said that all spoil left in the area are his and off limits. The Israelites eventually won the battle and left, but it was later found out in the next chapter, Joshua chapter 7, that someone had broken that law and had taken the spoil for themselves, which was Achan. He was a lover of money and had failed to overcome the temptation. His punishment? He and his family and all his animals were stoned and then burned. But as I mentioned before, temptations also have to come from our environment, like the people we deal with and the issues we have. So it won't come from some unknown place somewhere. To get an idea of this, let's look at another Bible story. I know, there are many. Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden. And God told them to stay away from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Satan came and tempted them with the same fruit in Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 to 6. They couldn't be tempted by money or anything like that because that kind of sin didn't exist in that environment. But they could eat the wrong fruit. And they did. Let's also quickly look at Joseph. Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife because of where he worked. You can read that story in Genesis chapter 39, verses 7 to 20 later. He already had money, so there'd be no reason to steal from Potiphar, but his wife was practically throwing herself onto him. This is the reason why Christ said that we can't run away from temptations in Matthew chapter 18, verse 7, where he stated, Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to that man by whom the offense cometh. See also 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. That same man who stated this, Jesus, was tempted three times while he was fasting in the desert by Satan the devil. In Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 to 11, Satan saw that he was hungry and tried to capitalize on the situation. And I think it's worth mentioning right now that God is not the one that brings temptations to our lives, as James told us in James chapter 1, verse 13, where he said, let no man say, when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. So there is no need in blaming him. But how do we scale the temptations? Well, this is where self-examination comes in, to know what we are susceptible to. If we find that we love money, we create a way for it to be impossible for money to cloud our senses. Everyone's situation is different. If we lack trust in God, we'd pray to Him for more of the Holy Spirit, which He'll provide us with, as we see in Luke chapter 11, verse 13. And then we'd also study the Bible to learn more about Him, see 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15. If we find that we have an addiction, we'd also need to pray to God for help and put ourselves in rehab. If we're avid validation seekers, we'd have to find ways to build our own self-esteem and distance ourselves from condescending people 
or any other solution that better fits the problems we have in our lives. If we have any trouble, we then pray to God for assistance. But to end on a slightly higher note, even though nobody wants temptations, they're still necessary for our faith to grow. As James the Apostle had stated, My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. James chapter 1 verses 2 to 3. Paul had said that no temptation will come to us that God thinks we can't handle in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 13, so it might help to keep that in mind as well. And that is the end of my answer to the question, where do temptations come from? If you have any other ideas that you'd like to share, then there's the comment section below. If you like the video, please subscribe and like. And if you want to know when I post again, then please click the notification bell. See you soon. Thank you.